we have internet for homo sapiens, like human beings like us. And as we talk to each other, we get cleverer, we get more intelligent, get new ideas. Well, Kofi's idea was to create internet or AI, generally for uh, intelligent agents to be able to communicate. So he created the product IP, which is a protocol upon which he built uh, nodes with which AI can communicate. And his rollout now is like the most number of nodes in the world with over 500,000 nodes. And HyperCycle with his token HYPC is well on its way to become, in my opinion, the default standard for decentralized AI. We're in Singapore during Token 2049 week, and we have the pleasure to interview Phil, an advisor at HyperCycle and the founder of Family Office Alliance. Could you tell us a bit more about both of those companies before we jump into it? Could you tell me a bit about yourself and your journey into crypto? Thank you. I went well. I'm kind of straddling both worlds between both the Web3 world and the uh, uh, normal financing world, uh, family offices. Um, and I was extremely, extremely excited to meet with uh, Tufi Saliba, the founder of HyperCycle. Um, when he explained to me his vision of creating the internet of AI, it just blew my mind. And I told him, you know, I'm all in on that. Um, maybe I just explain a little bit about HyperCycle first. So, um, you know, today we have internet for homo sapiens, like human beings like us. And as we talk to each other, we get cleverer, we get more intelligent, we get new ideas. Um, well, Tufi's idea was to create the internet of AI generally for uh, intelligent agents to be able to communicate. So he created the Toda protocol uh, or the Toda IP, which is a protocol upon which he built uh, nodes with which AI can communicate. And his rollout now is like the most number of nodes in the world with over 500,000 nodes. Um, and HyperCycle with his token HYPC is well on its way to become, in my opinion, um, the default standard for uh, decentralized AI. Um, and very glad to say that today at the Token 2049, uh, Michael Casey, a good friend, um, has launched something called the uh, Decentralized uh, AI Society, or DICE. And HyperCycle is one of the founding members uh, of this uh, organization. Um, and the good thing about HyperCycle is not only is it uh, looking at, like, let's say, creating um, the a network and platform with which the average uh, AI company would be able to train its AI on, but also it works together with the larger corporations as well. So in my own journey, I realized that actually a lot of the uh, traditional family officers and fund managers, both in Europe and Asia, um, they have a basic understanding of tech, of Web3, but uh, a lot of uh, fear and caution, which is rightly so, given the you know recent history. But at the same time, uh, you cannot deny the future. Um, and it's very important for uh, family officers and fund managers to get involved in the development of this new frontier of technology, um, not just in terms of you know, creating the next model or you know, super intelligence, um, but in terms of securing the future of AI to be something like uh, available for everyone, you know, yeah. Yeah, just to bring you back to HyperCycle before we mm. move to the Family Office side, my understanding of it is that it enables different AI models to communicate between each other mm -hmm. and generate the data. So could you tell me a bit more about how do you, what's the joining requirement for the AI models? Because the issue with AI, that it's only as good as the data that we initially feed into it. Um, so run me a bit. Run me through that process, please. Totally agree. Well, the whole idea of decentralized AI is that the name you know indicates is decentralized. So, in the system that HyperCycle create, you can upload uh, your AI models uh, into the system, and then the system will then start to learn from each other, and also the common shared data that's available. You know, so take for instance, uh, if my model currently do uh, OCR transcription between um, English and Aramaic, you know. Um, but, you know, it needs, you know, to have some information on Italian, you know, it will be able to communicate with the uh, next process AI on a node on that basis. And then uh, the protocol allows it for a quick and easy transfer of information between the two. And in that nanosecond, um, if there are certain business rules that's available, you will then execute those business rules so that uh, both the owners of the AI or the IP will get some kind of uh, 
uh, remuneration for yeah works done. Yeah, so I think it's going to be like a, a, a infrastructure that many people will use. And right now, uh, we are in the process of creating installers where you can actually upload uh, various AI into the system. Yeah, and in the meantime, the HYPC uh, is being used to power the nodes. Um, and it's really exciting because, you know, unlike the normal crypto world where uh, your uh, the non-fungible token is uh, somewhat symbolic, the HYPC is actually a, 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 a use token. Yeah, it is required for the operation of the nodes. So it's the real world application of um, the whole uh, blockchain technology in a way that it's supposed to. And I feel like I'm back in the early days of the internet, you know, where you have a lot of fluff. Uh, but a handful of real companies, real businesses uh, broke through, uh, you know, the Amazons and all that kind of thing. And then you had your uh, Yahoo versus Google in those early days. I think in the land of decentralized AI and AI right now, we are probably going through that phase. So I, I would encourage your, your, your readers to really pay attention to Hypercycle. I think it's going somewhere. And can you tell me about the blockchain component to it? Because mm. my understanding is that we could essentially implement the same structure within the web two world. So why did you decide to integrate blockchain to be able to achieve the same goal that we could have probably done in the traditional web two world? Well, for starters, I think I encourage your viewers to go to hypersector.io um, to read the uh, 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 white paper. But having said that, from what I understand, I'm not a terribly technical person, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, from what I understand, the whole idea of decentralized AI is, as the name suggests, to keep it from, uh, for one better word, uh, the tyranny of a few. Um, the idea here is that as compute power, you know, currently the wait list for H100 is 52 weeks, even 52 weeks, you know, which means that uh, the guys in the certain parts of the world that can raise a gazillion dollars would actually hog everything else. But there are probably lots of uh, compute power uh, latent around. So decentralized AI will allow access uh, to such compute power. Um, and decentralized AI will also allow for the rapid sharing of wealth that comes from, the, from that. In, on that note, Hypercycle is working on secure payment solutions uh, with a very interesting security protocols where you can make payments through just a ring. We're going to make some announcements to that as well. Yeah, so you can create the wealth and then secure your wealth with a very personal uh, wearable. Yeah. And you're the founder of the Family Office Alliance. So can you tell me a bit more about it and the families that you're working with? What was the objective behind mm. this? Well, in a way of international global wealth and finance, um, every listed company, every successful uh, founder eventually leads back to uh, somebody, somewhere, family. Um, and they set up organizational structures with which to manage that wealth. And at the same time, to see how that wealth can be, uh, for what a better word, transmitted from generation to generation. Um, but the, 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 the feelings of the family offices are more than just about wealth maximization. Uh, there is oftentimes a sense of value um, because their children and their children's children will be growing this world. So they look at um, solutions, uh, common issues uh, that faces the world, whether it's AI, super intelligence, um, you know, sustainability and all that kind of thing, um, and how that can actually be addressed with capital. And for me right now, in this interesting nexus, I mean, my my... My partner in this uh, area uh, has a Euro 50 billion family office uh, doing a lot of consumer brands. And on an average day, we meet a lot of very interesting people from all over the world, um, you know, from the Ray Dalios of the world to um, uh, yeah, people who, like, like Ray right now, for instance, um, I think my son Matt Dalio is looking at games, um, but not games per se, but games that can be used for learning. The idea here is, can you actually create a game which will, after you play it, you can graduate with a degree. Oh, wow. Now, now how, how cool is that, right? And then if it is a blockchain-related kind of game, 
um, then it becomes really interesting because uh, you can literally create situation where um, you know the the player uh, could have micro um, certification along the way. I mean, there's nothing to stop us from making learning fun and interesting. So that's what Matt Dalio is, is thinking about and wanting to build uh, with the Arizona State University. Um, and they just appointed the point man. And yeah, and so we, we deal with different people like that from all over the world um, and look at all the latest ideas and then uh, match uh, capital together with interest and crazy ideas to, to get things to work in the real world. Yeah, and what are the ticket sizes the, the family offices normally put? But also, could you just run me through your business model uh, mm. as a company as well? Okay, so uh, ticket sizes range and vary. I mean, uh, you've got the uh, you know guys related with South Bank family, minimum 15 million. Uh, you've got um, people who want to do it from philanthropy between 2 to 5 million. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a very wide range. Fundamentally, the Family Office Alliance, our focus is on the relationships and trust within a, a, a people that uh, we are comfortable with. So we're not trying to get a lot of members, but we're trying to get, um, we relate with people and principles uh, that we know and trust, and then we, we, we build a, a relationship within them. I mean, on a personal note, um, having got, come in touch with HyperCycle and being an advisor in HyperCycle to me, was tremendous because um, I learned so much uh, from not only Tufi, uh, but from an amazing uh, circle of advisors that HyperCycle has gotten. Uh, Professor Mihela uh, from Estonia, um, uh, Zai Alexandra from the United Nations uh, European Commission, and also the uh, WPPP, you know, private public partnership. It's very, very accomplished group of uh, advisors. And yeah, we talk regularly and think about how decentralized AI uh, can be valuable to the world. And for me, I operate a bit like a evangelist to try to bring this awareness uh, to the world of family offices. And just a final question about HyperCycle. Uh, what's on the roadmap for them? And why do you think will be the best milestones that they will achieve mm. uh, by the end of the year, but also next year? Well, I think compute has already started. Uh, we have rolled out a bunch of um, hardware, for instance, right now, uh, called the Hyper AI box, where for the retail customer, you can actually just purchase a box and then have the nodes operating inside it with some compute power. Um, in time to come, you, well, actually, you can already download the nodes and let it run off your computers, et cetera. This is more for the, maybe the less tech savvy ones who just want to get a box. Um, I think it is currently looking at uh, installing and uploading more models onto the... And so we are looking out for uh, uh, companies that, for instance, are into AI development and training their own models, for instance. Uh, we love to talk to them um, so that they can use you know, the wonderful infrastructure that uh, uh, the team has built up for them. Um, yeah, and we are looking at also creating more hardware devices uh, that can be related to payment or related to um, the security and the AI that we are creating in this uh, environment. Yeah. And I know, I know that you're not tech, too technical, but can you tell me about the unique consensus mechanism that they have? Because uh, it's proof of uh, microservices, and I've never heard of it. So Sorry? Proof of microservices. Uh -huh. uh, so could you just tell me about it and how it works? Okay. Well, I, I don't want to make a technical mistake and then because I know your readers are extremely uh, tech savvy. Uh, but suffice to say that uh, a typical node uh, that HyperCycle has, uh, you know, it's like a subtle server within it. So when it's combined with a HYPC token, it works as a hypershare, which then can be able to operate in order to support the various AI models uh, that are being deployed on it. Yeah, so that much from a non-tech angle, I do know. Uh, but I'll be happy to organize. And I think, you know, your readers will welcome another interview with someone who is more technical about it. Uh, I, I know enough to share with my, my uh, friends in the industry, finance industry about it. So sorry. No, 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 absolutely fine. Thank you. Could you just tell me a bit more about the token and the utility behind it? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the main utility and why did you guys launch the token? Okay. 
So at this juncture, you know, uh, the node operates as a little server um, and the instructions are kept, you know, within the HYPC token, right? So um, when that happens and you know, it's combined together and uh, what uh, in hypercycle we call it a marriage, then you get hypershare and hypershare operates as a machine with the instructions as required. So essentially, that's the utility value of the token. Nice. And I know that you've been working very closely with uh, ASEN. Could you just tell me a bit about it? Uh, what's the collaboration there? But also explain that to our users. Um, you are explaining it to me as the, not alternative, but the, the, the version of it, the version of EU in Asia uh, without the currency. But could you elaborate on this? Okay. So uh, I think over in this part of the world, uh, there are many countries, fragment, just like I think in Europe, there are about 80 countries. Um, in Asia, there are, you know, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, so Philippines. So the 10 smaller countries, we came together to create uh, what we call ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Uh, ASEAN is essentially a, U, a, a EU, but perhaps without the common currency uh, and uh, so diplomatically, it is very strong. But last year, I think about, yeah, about eight months ago, uh, ASEAN decided to commission a study to create a digital economic framework agreement. The idea here is what kind of things can we do both from the promotional perspective as well as the uh, legislative perspective to create more digital commerce, especially with AI or the disrupting industry. So in the next year, we will probably be the first country in the world, uh, oh sorry, the first region in the world to have a DFA, Digital Economic Framework Agreement. Uh, we are currently negotiating uh, all these treaties to be ratified, which ranges from, for instance, uh, stopping uh, criminal use, you know, like let's say scams uh, or uh, you know uh, fake deep fakes and all that kind of thing. Um, to promotional use uh, legislation, uh, like every company in the whole of ASEAN having a unique digital identifier uh, or standardization of payment protocols and uplift to e-commerce. The current uh, amount gross domestic product of these 10 countries in the digital space about US 300 billion. Um, the study estimate that if we implement all the rules, um, it will have an uplift of creating by 2030, between one to two trillion dollars uplift of the economy, right? Mm -hmm. Because you standardize, it's 800 million people. It's a, a large group of people rich in resources and all that. But if you are able to create and deploy technology for circular economy, for digital commerce, etc., that's the uplift that's possible. Um, so we're very excited about this. And as far as I'm concerned, decentralized AI need to be a very important part of this whole equation. And uh, yeah, for me, I'm going to try to put that in, onto the agenda. Nice. Thank you so much for dedicating time to come on the podcast, share the amazing projects they've been working on. Such a pleasure having you.